So tell me, Astro Harry, what we're going to talk about today. Well, we're going to talk about DSLRs and our wonderful telescope. Hi there, and I just thought I'd do a quick video on the difference between the focuses of these two Celestron 130 telescopes. So on the left is the AstroMaster 130 EQ, and on the right is the AstroPhi or SLT 130. So they're essentially the same telescopes uh, with the same optics in them, but the main difference is on the focuses, and this is especially important when it comes to using DSLRs. So I, you'll notice that they're roughly similar, but the 130 focuser is taller, than the SLT or the AstroPhi one. And the second thing is that this is all in one unit, there's nothing happens with this, whereas this will come apart, so there's a couple of screws, that comes out and then it means you've got more options in terms of what you can actually do with it in terms of attaching other things. Now, specifically this enables you to use two inch eyepieces, but for us, that doesn't really matter. What it does allow us to do is to get closer with the SLRs, so I've got a little, um, calibration measurer so we can work out roughly how tall the focuser is so from the body the um, this works out about um, let's just get this right this works out at roughly about 87 millimeters whereas over here with the Celestron to this upside down we are around um, 109 now that's not approximate that's just that's approximate that's just my measuring but it gives you an idea and the big difference is this black band here so this band here is the difference between the two focuses so what does that mean well in simple terms it means that when it comes to comes to attaching a DSLR you have an issue with something called prime focus so as the distance where you can actually achieve focus you've got these optics that are going all through the tube light comes in at the bottom goes to the end comes back up a mirror and up through the eyepiece and then it focuses at a certain point and it's obviously roughly around there because you think about it you put your eyepiece in you move the focuser you know you, that's where you're going so the problem you have with the dslr is that dslrs tend to have big thick bodies so here's an olympus dslr so this is an Olympus DSLR, and as you can see, it's a big chunky thing, it's quite thick. So although the lens is there, the mirror, if you like, or the sensor is right at the back there. So I'll just turn that around. So your sensor is there somewhere. So you've got all of this to go through and it works out at about um, 50, 55 millimeters. So that's a lot of additional things. So traditionally how you would attach this to a telescope is you've got this lovely adapter which is called a T-ring so you put that on the on the camera which I'm doing off camera and then what you would then do is attach it to the telescope so I've just attached it there so this is our DSLR with the T-ring and then you would put it into the, the camera so I'll put it in the one the 130 but it doesn't really make, make much difference so look at that you can see how much extra so we're going from the bottom there all the way up to about there that is just too much okay you're never going to be able to achieve focus because telescopes just weren't made for these sort of things so you have a bit of a problem so how do we solve this problem well there are a couple of things you can do but the manufacturers of the SLT and AstroPhi sort of got this because what they've done is with this adapter that unscrews and comes off it's actually in two parts so what you can do is you can actually unscrew the top part and then you get you get this second part so what you can do you can actually screw this onto a camera and then you can put that back in there so as you can see we're dealing with a lot less distance so that's great, but I, I'm still not convinced you're going to get the prime focus with, with that setup. So then your second option is to get a mirrorless camera. So I have got a mirrorless camera here. So that's what that uses. That's great. And then what you can do, you can take this off, take the eyepiece off. You can get a similar T-ring adapter, which I've got. Uh, and then you can put that on there. Now, as you can see, you're now dealing with a lot less distance and that for me is actually fine so when I go to actually take pictures I'm about there 
So I'm about there and I can use that DSLR to my heart's content. So there's no issues there whatsoever. I've not tried it with the EQ. Um, you know, it should work because as you can see, there's quite a lot to play with there. It's roughly equal to that distance there. So you should be okay. Um, so you can, you can do that. But then the other solution, the sort of old tried and tested solution is to use a Barlow lens, which is this thing here. You take the front off it because all we're interested in is the lens. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Um, so there's your Barlow lens. You attach that to your chunky DSLR because all the adapters tend to have those things there. And then you can then put that through your telescope and that will allow you to get prime focus because the Barlow lens gives you more um, it changes the focal length basically but the problem you have with the Barlow lens is twofold first of all um, you then have a much smaller field of view and the second problem you have is that you have an issue then with um, actually brightness because the Barlow lens whilst it's going to be twice as magnified will end up with uh, an image that's four times as dim so if you're looking to do DSOs and that sort of thing then you're then you might have a problem with that so so yeah so that's the sort of in a nutshell the sort of differences between these so this is they've, they've thought about this when they were you know remanufacturing them or redesigning them so they thought about this for the two inch and for the various adapters so you can put your um put your dslrs on or whatever but i prefer you believe that you are looking to use something like a mirrorless camera to get any success with this because the other issue that you have is that if you whop your massive DSLR on top of a telescope like this, this thing raises a ton and you have an issue with balance, especially with the 130 EQ, because the 130 EQs are already a little bit unbalanced with the, the mounts and the wobbliness and everything. So if you put, you know, half a pound or a pound's worth of telescope on there and it's hanging off the edge with barlows and things like that, you may end up with a you know an, un, an unbalanced telescope that's hard to you know maintain tracking on or maintain uh, focus on a, on an object so just thought i'd explain a few things about that you know you're quite welcome to experiment with these things but that's how it um that's how the difference between these two scopes the ultimate solution with using a dslr with these type of scopes is that you can then change the actual position of the mirror and that is simply done it sounds scary but actually it's not not too hard to do i'll just get this up here it's not easy dealing with five kilograms worth of um worth of telescope but on the end of both telescopes you have these calibration screws so you see there's six screws so you've got three three sort of chunky ones for fine adjustments and then you've got the, the screws themselves and all you do is you get six longer versions of them and then you can use those screws and you can move the mirror which is here where my thumb is you can then move it up the telescope um but obviously then that's altering the optics of your telescope and you may end up um you know having issues with visual or whatever you want to do but that is the ultimate solution get these screws bobs knobs or wherever and just move that telescope move the mirror up and it only needs to go up about um half an inch an inch something like that and you'll be fine so that's it for now thank you